Maruchan superfans are everywhere. From the busy moms who want to deliver maximum flavor in a flash to dorm room diners who want to put some slurp in their step. There are a ton of copycats you could use, but if you want to bless your bowl, there's only one true Maruchan. Whether you choose instant lunch, ramen bowls, yakisoba, or restaurant quality gold, Maruchan is the only ramen worth obsessing over. Smiles for all, Maruchan. See what all the ramen hype is about at maruchan.com. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we are taking a quick trip back to Bend, not to talk about things to do, but places to stay the night while you are there. Yeah, Vicky, as you and our listeners here know, I've been spending uh, a lot of time in Bend recently, getting up to all kinds of things from waterfall hikes to sled dog rides and bakery tours. You can check out those episodes if you didn't listen to them previously. Uh, but today I wanted to talk about some of the places I've been staying as I've been going to Bend, compiling sort of a list of I don't know, the best places, my favorite places, I think, to stay around town. I am very excited to hear about this. The few times that I've been to Bend, I'm usually going kind of last minute, and I'm kind of scrambling to find accommodations. And I'm not going to lie, when I am looking up different places, they're usually really expensive <laughs> and like kind of out of my price range. So I could use some tips. Yeah, what... Tell tell us where you've stayed before, Vicky, in Bend. So as I've talked on the podcast before, I am a yoga teacher. And this past summer, I went to Bend Yoga Festival. And I really went on a whim, very last minute. And I found an Airbnb. And <laughs> it was called the Breaking Bad Pad. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> It was literally just a trailer set up on like the backyard of people's land. And it was a little bit outside of Ben, like right off the highway, kind of in this fenced off area. And, you know, actually on the inside, it was quite nice. On the outside, it looked a little dilapidated, <laughs> but um, the inside was very nice. It even had like a portable air conditioning machine inside. It did not have any running water. Uh, it had a jug of water on the inside. It had a very comfortable bed. Um, and then there was an outhouse that you could use. And um, for, I think, just around 100 bucks for one night, I was good with that. <laughs> I probably had a very different experience than most who uh, find accommodations in Bend. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, with all respect to our friends at the Breaking Bad pad, um, we're, we're talking about some some a step up from there, I think, today, um, perhaps even a couple steps up from there. Um, you know, I, I think when I whenever I look for somewhere to stay in Venger, right, there are a lot of places I can get pretty expensive, especially in the summertime, especially on weekends. Um, they I mean, the, the prices really, really fluctuate throughout the seasons. Um, but what I was kind of looking for. Um, and I did a lot of these trips with my partner, Sadie, and we kind of are of like mind. We like a sort of a place that is comfortable, that has like modern rooms, meaning they've like renovated it in the last decade or two, uh, at least um, places that are obviously clean and comfortable, um, but like nothing necessarily too fancy. We don't need the $600 a night stay at a big resort with a golf course and the in-house steak dinner restaurant you know we don't we don't need any of that but you know a step up from like you know um the your chain corporate hotels so we kind of cut out all the corporate hotels we cut out the airbnbs because that's just too many things um as you explained uh you, you never know when you're going to get a breaking bad pad um we cut out the big fancy places so we're kind of looking at everything that's kind of in that sweet spot in between and we ended up with this this really interesting sort of um, uh, grouping of like boutique motels or uh, interesting B&Bs, um, all, all kinds of different stuff that I wanted to sort of uh, 
put together in this list of, of places to stay in Bend that we wanted to talk about here today. All right, let's let's get into our list here. Um, where should we start off? I, I, I want to start off at the boutique motels. This is like sort of a unique, if, or it feels like sort of unique way to stay. I mean, we sort of know the boutique hotel scene, like, you know, the Jennings Hotel and Joseph we've talked about here before, or some of these sort of small, like, you know, 21st century um, hotels with like, you know, little communal kitchens or, you know, like they, they, they hired some artists to design the room. Um, very cute and very interesting and fun, but like affordable. That's sort of like the boutique hotel trend. But in Bend, we've got these boutique motels. So these are like old, older motels, your classic like 1950s motor hotel that in the last couple of decades, they have like renovated and modernized into sort of what people want these days. So there's a few that I'll, I'll run through kind of quickly here. So the one that I've seen at honestly the most, just because it it was most convenient to a lot of what I was doing, and because the price was often right, was the Campfire Hotel. So um, it's an interesting spot. It's it's it was sh- within walking distance of downtown Bend, but also kind of just off the highway. And this is a spot that is like really designed for younger people. When I see younger people, I mean like younger than than me, and I'm in my my, my mid thirties. So it's like. It's got sort of like that, like there's a, a, a canteen, a bar that can get pretty lively. They have like regular drag bingo nights and karaoke nights and open mic nights. There's a heated pool. There's a hot tub. Um, they've got big fire pits. Uh, they have music playing on speakers through most of the day and evening. So if you're like wanting peace and quiet, this is not the place for you. But if you're looking for like, you know, to come and hang out in the hot tub with a cocktail and like meet some interesting people or like hang out with a bunch of your friends after a day of hiking or skiing or something, Camphor Hotel is designed for that. It's designed for that like social minded uh, lodging. Um, but like, you know, they what they do is they do it very well. The rooms themselves are like they're modern. They're good. They're updated. The showers have like good water pressure and the water is hot. Um, I've honestly always enjoyed my stay there. That sounds like such a fun time and also like a really great place maybe to go if you're traveling solo because of that community aspect and be able to Mm -hmm. socialize, make new friends if you're interested in doing that. Um, Where about in Bend is the campfire? It is is pretty much right in the thick of things. Um, I mean, Bend is small enough that like most things are near most things, if that makes sense. Um, so, I mean, it, it's basically just due east of downtown Bend. Um, so if you're, you know, it's just a, just on the other side of US 97. So, you know, if you're coming from downtown, you cross the freeway, um, you cross the highway, you basically get to Campfire Hotel in a couple of blocks. So it's, it's really just right there. And when you say it's um, pretty affordable, what types of prices are we expecting here? Yeah, so um, I to, because the prices fluctuate so much, like we talked about, when I made this guide, I just looked at everything for the, the first weekend in June. Um, as sort of like that's when prices kind of start to go up for the summer. And it seemed like a, just a pretty decent comparison point for most places. So when we talk about prices today, just just know that we're talking about sort of that first weekend in June. And, um, at the campfire hotel, that was about two eighty six per night. So that's, that's a reasonable price for Bend. It's kind of, I, I know for some people that's, that's a lot, especially, you know, for like a motel. Um, but that's, that's kind of what we're talking about here. Got it. Um, really cool. Did, did you make any friends the last time you stayed there, Jamie? No, I, I do feel, <laughs> I feel like I just, like personally, I'm I'm it's a little younger of a vibe that I typically like. That's not it's not to say that they were all like young people. There are people all ages there. Um, but it's uh, I found myself just wanting to like soak in the hot tub. Like we went and stayed the night, like we like to hang, soak in the hot tub and do a crossword puzzle. Mm, <laughs> That's like there you go. our way to sort of unwind, you know, after a day and then go out to eat and go to bed. It's sort of our our yeah. vibe. 
but there were lots of people there being social and making friends. Um, we just didn't happen to do it in our most recent trips. I feel like with a name like Campfire, they need to have an amenity where that you get like a s'mores kit upon your arrival. They do. Oh, you can good. buy one. You can buy one. But like okay, you, okay. that is an amenity they offer. Um, and I last time I saw some people, it was a little chilly. You know, it was in October. And people were out there roasting s'mores in one of that big, you know, communal fire. I love that. Another <laughs> bonus looking on this map of the proximity of Campfire to Cafe de Chutes, which was mm-hmm. on your bakery roundup and a place where yeah. I visited uh, one of my times in Bend. Uh, that's a big bonus for me personally because I loved Cafe de Chutes. Oh, yeah, big time. And, and it's everything is so easy to walk to from pretty much everywhere we're going to talk about today. There's lots of good stuff within walking distance or short driving distance or biking distance or however you're getting around Ben. So definitely, um, definitely all very convenient. I just remember, Jamie, that I actually have, in fact, stayed at another boutique hotel and I stayed there for such a short period of time. I forgot that I stayed there. But um, moving on into this list, last time I was in Ben was climbing South Sister and I stayed the night or rather just a few hours of sleep at the Lodge <laughs> Hotel in Bend. Yeah, the next one, the Lodge Hotel, which is spelled um, L-O-G-E, but pronounced Lodge, just so you know. Yes. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, again, another one of these re- renovated motels um, designed specifically for um, outdoors folks. So you've got ski racks, bike racks inside the rooms. You've got um, mountain bike trails right there and such easy access to... Three Sisters Wilderness, Mount Bachelor. It's kind of on that side of town. And um, really, it's designed for folks doing what you talked about doing, of getting out there and being able just to roll out of, your, out of the parking lot and go straight into the wilderness. So, Vicki, what did you think about Lodge Bend? I really liked it. I had stayed at Lodge Leavenworth uh, the first time at at Mm -hmm. this brand. And I think that one was a little bit more like newly renovated, but what I saw of Lodge Bend was great, even though, you know, I got there kind of late with my friend. And so it was already dark. Most of everything was closed. It definitely just because of our timing did not have a communal feel to it because it was kind of empty. It was also like midweek, but I could definitely see it being a place where people are hanging out. There's like a fire pit. I think there was a food truck set up. So although I didn't get to experience it firsthand, those types of amenities were definitely there and looked really nice. They also have a pool and a hot tub there. And another thing that I'm always looking for in these days is whether or not a place is dog friendly. And they are extremely dog friendly to the point where if you make your reservation and you say that you have a dog, they'll like add in a dog bed or water bowls for you. And so I really love that aspect about it. Wow. Stella living it up at Lodge. I love that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The price for Lodge, um, again, that first week in June, uh, starting at $238 per night. So a little bit less, kind of in that, in that, you know, that kind of that mid range. Um, $230, that's, that's, that feels pretty reasonable these days for, for Bend that time of year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think I stayed at like a typical like two queen setup. And so just splitting it between my friend and I, which was nice. And then uh, they do have a hammock in each room, too. So (laughs) someone really just wants to sleep in a hammock. They can do that. When I stayed there, I tried to get up into that hammock and I was like standing on a chair (laughs) trying to get into the thing. And I I was like, I'm not going to I'm going to hurt myself. This is crazy. I, I love the idea, but it felt more like decor than actual, like a useful means of sleeping to me. This is true. It is a little difficult to get up in there and come out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the other boutique motel on my list is a place called Wall Street Suites. Not nothing to do with Wall Street, okay. the financial. Don't. This is just the, the a, a street in Bend is called Wall Street. Okay. And this is where it's located. So this is a little bit different. So they took a motel and they um, updated all the rooms to make them into suites. So aside from having your bedroom, you also have a living room and like a full kitchen. That full kitchen to me is what makes Wall Street suites stand out because not everyone is going to want to go to Bend and eat out every night. 
Um, not everyone can or wants to do that. So if you want to be able to cook for yourself, this is a great spot to do it. Um, so full kitchen, again, a living room that's kind of separate from the bedroom. And for me, the real cherry in the top of this place is they have really beautiful showers, um, skylight showers with like reclaimed wood, uh, walls and stuff. I, I, I took a shower in there, like the one night I stayed there, um, at like the golden hour and it was beautiful. <laughs> it was like a transcendent experience. I loved it. Um, so highly recommend this place for the kitchens. Sure. But also the showers though, if you just want like a beautiful shower, um, and a place to cook a meal, wall street suites is, is the spot for you. Wow. That sounds so nice. Also when we're, when we're talking about these kind of like nice boutique motels in the back of my head, I'm, you know, I think we're going to talk about some, some campgrounds here at the end, but like for people who are, have been out backpacking or whatever, maybe like one mm -hmm. night staying at one of these nice places, enjoy a sky lit shower after like yes. days on the trail when you're coming back all stinky. Like that sounds really nice. That's the way to do it. Backpack for a, you know, a few nights and then spend your last night in, in a, place with a hot shower and you know oh that's the way to do it. that's i always recommend that for folks backpacking just splurge on a hotel for one of those nights at the end it's a must so wall street suites a little bit more expensive uh 299 per night um so you know it comes with some extra amenities and you're you're paying for it a little bit but again not too much out of that range you're still in that like 200 dollar um two to three hundred dollar range yeah so not not a lot not a lot of movement within that yeah so moving on within our list here i know that bend has a hostel which could be a more affordable option yeah this is a, a cool spot called bunk and brew um it is modeled after european european style youth hostels but it is like so bend um it's in this historic house um in town and you know kind of within the, and again with the walking distance downtown in the thick of things. Um, but it's got like, you know, a beer garden in the back, with like food trucks that are always there. They have um, live events. They've got open mics. They've got karaoke's. They've got dance parties. Um, they've got, you know, just everything you'd want there. Apparently, they say the best Halloween party in town. Um, so keep that in mind. And they, in, and they have this sort of uh, this, again, it's sort of this, this hostel style living. So all the bathrooms are communal. Um, there's a couple of, of shared rooms. You have bunks. Um, there's some that are gendered, some that are co-ed, uh, and there are also a few private bedrooms as well. Um, but the whole idea there is to be in community with other people, to be around other people. So, um, I, I talked to the owners while I was there or the managers while I was there, and they said, you know, their whole thing is encouraging people to lean into the discomfort of being in communal living. So I think that's something we're used to. Um, going and having our own space and our own stuff kind of cloistered in our hotel rooms, which a lot of people like. I like that. Um, but there's something really cool about being in a, in a place with other people where you might go cook a meal in the kitchen and someone else is cooking and you might like, you know, swap ingredients or like someone might be like, hey, I've got extra dinner. Does anyone want any dinner? And you're like, yeah. And the next morning you go and buy some donuts and you bring them back. And you're like, I bought donuts for everybody. And that kind of stuff, like literally that happens there. That's the way they do it. And they have like, free camping and hiking gear you can like borrow and um you know it, it's just like a it's like a big family there and it's very cool also worth noting if you're in a van and you're doing that hashtag van life um you can you can park there for like i want to say it's like 10 bucks a night um and you pay like i think 15 and you can get like you know laundry so if you're looking to like do some laundry get a shower and you're just living out of your van for a while for whatever reason, they're super into that. Um, they, they think they call it their dirt bag deal. Um, so <laughs> a, a good resource for folks who are looking for, um, you know, more affordable living, more affordable lodging. So um, I, from what I can understand, the private rooms there are going to run you about the same price as you would a hotel room, maybe a little cheaper, but if you're looking at just like their, um, their, their, their shared bunks in a room, that's going to be about a, a 130 a night. Again, for that kind of like higher end season that goes down 
in the winter like everything else does. This was a place where I was actually considering staying for yoga festival, but Unfortunately, my issue is that I snore. And so for the sake of literally everyone else around me, like I'm not going to stay in the bunk rooms and that's just for everyone's interest. Um, that's so generous. Of yeah. You. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I was looking into that like dirt bag deal because I did not have running water at my Airbnb. I was like, okay, if I really get like really stinky and gross doing yoga all day, it's nice to know that I have that option of like just going, taking mm -hmm. a shower, cleaning up a bit, and then continuing on. Yeah, it, it's really nice that they're able to offer something. And they, their whole thing is it's you know, to, to consider the people who don't have the means to stay other places. So, um, you know, for folks who, who just need, like you said, a shower or they need a place to stay for, for cheap, know that there's a place for you in Bend, uh, the old bunk and brew. Okay, so we got our boutique motels, we got our hostel. What else do we have as far as variation on places to stay? Just a couple more spots, um, different kinds of things. So the first one is uh, the, the bed and breakfast, obviously a common type of lodging. Um, and Bend, of course, has one like everyone else. This is a place called the Mill Inn Bed and Breakfast. Um, I stayed there at kind of a weird time. It was like during a COVID wave and it was like during the, like the winter and there was nobody there. Um, like we had one room and then there was like one guy in one other room, but like the, the cook who normally cooks breakfast in the morning had COVID. And so they were like, I'm so sorry, but like, we can't make you breakfast in the morning. No. And it was like really empty and weird, but <laughs> That's just a time I so but I got a chance to sort of like wander around and look at the whole place and poke my head into all the rooms. Um, very charming little spot. Uh, each room is decorated differently. It's sort of more like old fashioned style um, decor, um, you know, like sort of a, you know, the, the more opulent bed frames and um, beautiful bathrooms. And they've got like chandeliers in the dining room. Um, a little bit more old fashioned, but very, very cute. Mm -hmm. They have a hot tub in the back um, that people can use. Um, the rooms are pretty small, but like they have all this communal space that people are invited to spill out into, like the living room area, the dining room, the backyard. Um, and typically, unless the chef has COVID, <laughs> you get a simple breakfast with the room. Cute. Um, and they do offer like those extra early. There's like some sort of early bird breakfast if you're looking to like, for example, get out and hike South sister uh, early in the morning. You can request an early breakfast to take on the, on the road. Oh, cool. That's really nice. Do you know what like types of food they serve? I always think of bed and breakfast is almost like Victorian, like you get tea and crumpets or something. <laughs> I, I think it's a bit more basic than that. I think it, it's pretty, um, they call it a home style breakfast. So, I mean, you know, think about like, um, uh, Belgian waffles, bacon, sausage, potatoes, nice. you're like fresh fruit and yogurt, mm -hmm. uh, granola and orange juice and coffee. It's like that kind of thing. Um, like you might get at one of those corporate hotel continental breakfasts, but I'm sure like way better, yeah. um, because it's made in house, obviously. Yeah. Anything else to note about this, uh, bed and breakfast? Yeah. Well, this, this is a, a sort of in the same price range that we've been talking about, but again, a little bit more. So mill in bed and breakfast uh, will run you about three ten a night again in that kind of first week into June time frame. So um, obviously a little a little fancier, um, but not too much out of that window that we've been looking at. Well, moving on to our list, you know we've hit a lot of different spots, and uh, mm. we'd be remiss not to mention good old McMinimins. Trusty McMinimins. There's one in every town. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, people have a lot of feelings about McMinimins both really positive and both really negative, but you know what? It's McMinimins. It is what it is. And, um, it's great. So, uh, the McMinimins that is in Bend is the old St. Francis school, um, which is an old Catholic school, um, that has been transitioned into a, uh, a hotel as well as a place where there are a bunch of beers, you know, beer bars and restaurants. Um, there's like, you know, of course a hidden beer bar and like a broom closet, um, it's a, it's very McMinimins experience. So, you know, if you are looking for that kind of experience, obviously this is a place for you. Um, or if you're just looking for sort of like 
you know, uh, a place to stay where, you know, there's going to be food on site. There's going to be drink on site. Um, they also, I think the best thing about this is the saltwater soaking pool. Mm -hmm. Um, that is like in, like, it looks like the prefects room out of Harry Potter, the prefects bathroom. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's, um, like opulent and grand and there's like murals in the, it's like incredible. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. So you can do that. Like you can just go. So if you want to, don't want to stay there, you can just go check it out. But the nice thing is if you stay there, you can go in like the uh, guest only hours. And I did that and had the whole place myself. Wow. Um, just like soaked in the silence. Um, and oh God, it was so nice. So in McMinimins, it, they, 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 they're, they're, pro- they're bringing a lot of amenities to the table here. Um, not only the places to drink, but like, again, the restaurant, which if you've ever been to McMinimins, you know exactly what's in the menu. Um, so they've got that. They, they really make it a place where you can sort of like spend your time there. Yeah. Um, you don't have to like worry about going out to find somewhere to eat or drink or whatever. So if you're, you know, going backpacking all day and your legs are tired, you just want to like roll out of your room into a broom closet beer bar. (laughs) This is a spot for you. Um, that's so specific, but this is a place (laughs) for you. The, the pricing on old St. Francis school, uh, about two fifty per night. So again, sort of on that lower end of things. Um, but a really, really cool and interesting space as most McMinimins properties are. Yeah. I, I've been wanting to check out that saltwater pool. It looks so beautiful. So this used to be a school or this yeah. this used to be a church? Okay. Yeah. Or both. I, well, I'm, it's a Catholic school, so certainly it had a church in it. Yeah. See, that's growing up and uh, someone who went to a Catholic <laughs> school for many years. Like, I don't know if I could comfortably just relax here, but... Uh, Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'm <laughs> understandable weird vibes. Yeah, I get that. I am curious like what the salt water pool was in its previous iteration as a school like did they, Yeah. Uh <laughs> That's a that's a great question. I mean, were the nuns soaking in, in a salt water pool and it, that's just like historic? Would be pretty great and more power to him if that was the case. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Well, good to know a little bit of background on this uh, saltwater pool. Maybe I'll go down a rabbit hole afterwards and figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we've hit up a lot of different motels, hostels, Airbnbs, McMinimins. Of course, there are campground options as well for you to stay at in Bend or around Bend. So many places to camp around Bend. Um, But I I went with the local state park, Tumalo State Park. Um, if you want to like just be close to Bend, you want to do all the Bend stuff, you don't want to leave the town too far, um, Tumalo State Park is a really, really, really great option. It's just about 15 minutes from downtown Bend. Um, and it's uh, got a campground with seven yurts and like, you know, 50 plus tent sites, um, a couple dozen full hookup RV sites, a couple of group campsites. So Um, they've got like all your camping options covered and it is open technically year round. The campground is, um, and the park, but, um, it's kind of only partially open, but those yurts are really, really clutch in the winter time. Um, so if you don't want, you want to, you know, stay somewhere for really cheap, um, and you don't want to pitch a tent, then the yurts are a great way to go. Um, so I want to say those yurts, I should have this price in front of me, but I, I want to, I believe they're around $56 a night or so. Um, and worth noting campground state park campground prices do not fluctuate throughout the year. They are the same. So you're, you're not going to worry about getting like those peak prices or anything like that. Um, but 10 sites, of course, of which they have plenty are only 21 bucks a night. So, I mean, <laughs> we're talking, uh, a, a, big price difference between literally everywhere we've talked about and this. And sure, you're getting literally just like a patch of land um, on which to sleep. Um, So obviously it's going to be a lot cheaper. But um, for folks who are comfortable camping, um, who don't want to spend a lot of money on lodging, Tumalo State Park is a really, really nice spot. 
Yeah. Uh, having that proximity to downtown Bend is amazing. And uh, have you stayed at one of these yurts here? I have not stayed at the yurt. I have I have camped there in a tent. Um, and, you know, there is um, a little bit of of highway noise. It is like kind of right next to a uh, highway. So it's not necessarily, you know, it, it's not sleeping in the Three Sisters Wilderness, right? You're you're going to have some traffic noise and that's to be expected. So folks who are sensitive to that might just be aware and bring some earplugs. Um, I didn't have a problem personally with it. I've not stayed in the yurts there, but I, I've stayed in state park campground yurts before. They're all the same. They got the same stuff. Um, they're great. Uh, they've got a little electric wall heater. Um, they've got like those um, beds that are kind of like thick green mats. So you bring your own bedding, um, you know, bring your cozy clothes um, and uh, hang out. It, it's, a, it's a great spot. Usually they can sleep multiple people. If these yurts are like the other ones, they can sleep, I think, technically five people to them. So if you're cozy with your friends, you can get a yurt and stay there together. Um, really great for families as well who are trying to travel on the cheap. So um, Tumalo State Park, I, you know, I, I like this place. I like it a lot. And aside from the campground, they do have a lot of places, like a lot of things to do there. So there's a really nice day use area just along the Deschutes River there. And people like to do picnicking there and go fishing there. Um, there's also um, a trail that runs along the river, which is called the Deschutes River Trail, like a lot of other trails along the Deschutes River. And it's a really, really beautiful stretch, just a couple miles down to um, some sort of metal boardwalks over the rapids. Um, really beautiful area. And you can turn around and come back, I keep hiking for several more miles. So a lot to get up to just within the park itself. If you want to have sort of a self-contained adventure there, you, you can have it. Yeah. For me, myself, I appreciate this episode because now, you know, I have some more options for next time when I go to Bend. And also, maybe I just need to look more ahead of time and not go so last minute. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Yes, exactly. For sure. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there's a lot of places we didn't mention. Um, there's a lot of places to stay in Bend. So um, with all respect and apologies to, to spots that are really cool that I didn't make it to that I didn't find in my searches. Um, always going back to Bend, and I always appreciate your recommendations. So if you have anything, uh, let us know. Yes, please let us know. Well, folks, that will do it for today. And until next time, you can catch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoyed the show. And if you want to support this podcast as well as our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you're interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at Oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.